Introduction to Robotics, Robotic Arm Link Velocity. In this figure, we have an arbitrarily looking link, link I, which is also in connection with another link, link I plus one. We only have a part of link I plus one shown here. Now, um, at the origin, uh, we have a frame attached to the uh, link I. This is frame I, and we have uh, a frame I plus one uh, supposedly attached to link I plus one. And uh, for every lecture, we have a main question to answer. The question for this lecture is going to be how to find the velocity of a certain link in a robotic arm. And when we say the velocity of a link, in, in actuality, uh, we mean the linear velocity of the origin of the frame attached to that link in addition to the angular velocity of the link itself. So we have two components here the linear velocity and linear velocity is defined with respect to a point the point in this case is going to be the origin origin of the frame attached to the link and uh, the rotational velocity of the link itself and um, we are going to use an approach which is called uh, velocity propagation method if you know the velocity of one link you should be able to compute the velocity of the next one. This can be done in a successive way, propagating from the base to the end effector. And this systematic approach can be easily implemented in programming. So if we know the velocity of link one, we should be able to compute the velocity of the next link attached to it, since we already know the type of joint uh, that uh, that is between both of them. So uh, let's start with a simple case where we have only two particles, a particle A and a particle B. These are two independent particles. We have uh, a coordinate system, a frame I attached to particle A and uh, a frame I plus one attached to, part to particle B. We know from uh, vector algebra that RB, the position vector of frame of, of particle B in a, re a reference frame, is in reality uh, the summation of two vectors, RA and RB with respect to A. However, if we want to do this summation, we have to take care that all of the three vectors should be expressed in the same uh, references reference our coordinate system now however let's look at the case where ra is given and expressed in terms of the reference coordinate system however uh, the vector rb with respect to a is only expressed um, with respect to frame i in that case we need to do mapping of the uh, description of this vector from frame i to the reference frame and this is exactly what we can see in this equation so here we can see that the position vector b is in reality the summation of uh, position vector a plus the position vector b with respect to a however after pre-multiplying it with a rotation matrix this rotation matrix is used to map RB with respect to A from the uh, being expressed in the I frame to being expressed in the uh, reference frame. So all of the three vectors now are expressed, would become expressed in the same reference frame. You can think about it as if I is cancelling out
So this is the equation that we obtained where we have the velocity of particle B uh, expressed in the uh, reference frame uh, as a function of the velocity of particle A expressed also in the reference frame added uh, to the skew symmetric matrix of the uh, angular velocities of the link multiplied by the rotation matrix expressing the orientation of the frame I with respect uh, to the reference frame multiplied by the position of B with respect to A expressed also in the expressed in frame I uh, added to uh, again the rotation matrix multiplied by the velocity of B with respect to A expressed in frame I now let's consider a case where if we have both frames the reference frame and frame I are coincident at this instant in time which means that we can uh, replace the uh, uh, superscript reference here with the superscript I so you can see here we replaced every and each reference with I becomes I here same here and the same here um, you can uh, notice that we have the rotation matrix R I with respect to I what does it mean it means the orientation rotation matrix that represents the orientation of frame I with respect to its own self which is of course going to be identity so because it's going to be parallel to itself so identity and multiplying any ma matrix by identity is uh, equivalent to multiplying it by a one so this can disappear or drop from the expression this term also so now we have the velocity uh, equation to be as follows So this is the equation here which is um, representing the velocity of particle B uh, as a function of the velocity of particle A and the velocity of particle B with respect to A. Now we want to, uh, instead of having these two particles just you know wandering around uh, independent from each other, we would assume that particle A is attached and moving with the origin of frame I and particle B is also attached and moving with the origin of frame I plus 1 in other words A can become I and B can become I plus 1 so you can see uh, in this equation now B can become I plus 1 A can become I uh, for the term RB with respect to A we can replace this with another expression uh, so in, instead of having R we can have a capital P for position of I plus 1 with respect to I and uh, so it's another way of writing it that's it and uh, what about this term here the velocity of B with respect to A expressed in frame I now it really um, it really comes to uh, what are we assuming here if we are assuming that joint I plus 1 between link I and I plus 1 uh, and link I plus 1 is a revolute joint then this term will be 0 why because uh, this is link I is a rigid link so the distance between its points is going to be a uh, constant so not going to be changing and its shape shape is not also going to be changing and uh, the joint is only a revolute joint so uh, the position from here to here from the origin of I to origin of I plus 1 or as we said before from A to B uh, is gonna be constant and thus its derivative which is the Now, let's uh, pre-multiply both sides of the equation by the rotation matrix uh, expressing the orientation of frame I with respect to frame I plus 1. So, pre-multiplying here, pre-multiplying 
the whole uh, expression which is the right side of the formula above here now these two together represent mapping of the velocity of i plus 1 from frame i to frame i plus 1 we already um, discussed this in a previous lecture uh, it looks like as if the i is cancelling out with the i so now we have the velocity here we have the velocity of i plus 1 which is the origin of frame i plus 1 expressed in frame i but now we have the velocity of the origin of frame i plus 1 expressed in, uh, in, in the same frame which is i plus 1 now to the rest of the terms we are not gonna really multiply uh, the rotation matrix uh, with this term and try to find uh, uh, the mapping of it to the i plus one uh, i plus one frame because the whole idea is to keep each velocity expressed in its own frame so now I have velocity uh, of origin frame i expressed in frame i and I have here the velocity of frame i plus 1 expressed in frame i plus 1 so this is the previous formula we just talked about and uh, again we have a frame where I have a velocity of B, velocity of A, and the relative velocity of B with respect to A. Again, we said particle A is assumed to be attached to the origin here, particle B attached to the origin of frame I plus 1, and now we're looking at the alternative case, which is having joint I plus I plus 1 to be a prismatic joint. For this case, this term will not cancel out but rather uh, will be written in this form why or how so if it's a prismatic joint this here this part of link i plus one will be moving translating along this axis so it's moving along the z i plus one so this is why we if this is a vector here x component y component and the z component so in the z component we will have a, a, a velocity component and this is expressed in i plus one frame because we already know it given along the z i plus one so in the z this is why it's in the third ent entry here and i plus one the i plus one here however uh, we already talked about that for adding up vectors uh, it should be done in a way that everything is expressed in the same frame so frame i frame i so this cannot be written uh, uh, without uh, pre-multiplying it by a rotation matrix and thus mapping it from the i plus one to the i frame so as if this is cancelling with this so now everything is expressed in the i frame So again, this is the equation we just got before. I want to pre-multiply everything with the rotation matrix from uh, which uh, represent the orientation of frame i with respect to frame i plus 1. Pre-multiplication, so I have it here on the left side. I have it on the right side before these two terms here. And I have it also on the here before this term. Now, uh, again, we will have a mapping here, mapping from i plus 1 to i plus 1, as if these are cancelling out with each other. We said again that we will not try to uh, do the mapping with this one, we just keep it as is, because we want to keep the velocity in its own frame. And um, if you multiply these together, this will give me the rotation matrix of i plus 1. Uh, with respect to i plus 1 which is in fact the identity matrix and multiplying any matrix by the identity matrix is uh, equivalent to multiplying by a 1 uh, and thus uh, this term can uh, drop out and cancel from the formula cancel out from the formula and here we will get uh, the uh, equation here that's giving me the velocity of the origin frame i plus 1 in its own frame as a function of the velocity of the origin of frame i 
uh, in its own frame which is i and we have here the position of the origin frame i plus one with respect uh, to frame i and here we have the joint velocity because we're talking about talking about a prismatic joint so velocity along the z-axis so we can see now uh, we have a summary for the linear velocities and um, this is for the case if we had a revolute joint and this is for the case if we had a prismatic joint um, we can already see the progressive nature uh, of this kind of uh, solution or approach you can see that the uh, velocity of the origin of frame i plus one depends on the velocity of the origin of the pre origin of the frame attached to link i which is the link before it and this is the angular velocity of link i so if you already know the linear velocity the angular velocity of link i uh, we should be able to calculate the linear velocity of link i plus one here this is uh, just uh, the position of origin of i plus one with respect to i and this is for the case in a prismatic joint same thing so now we are interested in uh, computing the angular velocity of link i plus one it turned out to be straightforward um, so let's consider a case of a revolute joint if we had joint i plus one to be a revolute joint then it makes sense that the angular velocity of link i plus one is simply the angular velocity of the link before it plus a new component due to the rotation of the joint because this is a revolute joint so due to this rotation we can add an additional component to the angular velocity to the, to the one before it to the link before it in order to get the angular velocity of link i plus one this can be written as follows so omega here the angular velocity of link i plus one is going to be the angular velocity of link i both of them expressed in frame i plus the new component due to the joint rate here to the uh, uh, theta dot and note that the theta dot is uh, in the z we have here x y and z in the z uh, entry in the matrix column matrix here so because it is rotation about the z and which z it's in the z i plus one this is we have the i plus one however as we said before if you want to do this kind of addition we have to make sure that they are all expressed in the same frame which is the i frame and this is why we pre-multiply this column matrix with the rotation matrix from i plus one to i to represent the mapping here from as if we are canceling i plus one with i plus one as you may have already uh, expected we are going to pre-multiply both sides of the equation by this rotation matrix and thus you can uh, you can recognize here the mapping of the angular velocity of link i plus one from being expressed in frame i to being expressed in frame i plus one this is from the definition of mapping that we covered in a previous lecture and here the, here we'll do nothing and in, in, in this part we will not do the mapping because we want to keep um, omega of link i expressed in its in its, in its own frame for these two uh, product of these two matrices this is going to give me the rotation matrix of i plus one expressed in a frame i plus one which is basically the identity matrix and as we said before multiplying any matrix by the identity matrix is equivalent to multiplying a number by one which give me the same number so simply what i'm trying to say is that this can be cancelled out it will drop out from the formula and this is going to be um, the formula for the angular velocity of link i plus one the 
other case where joint I plus 1 is a prismatic joint uh, this is straightforward as the uh, the joint here is a prismatic joint so it will not allow any rotation only translation is allowed so it also makes sense here that the angular velocity of link I plus 1 is basically gonna be the same as the angular velocity of the link before it which is link I expressed mathematically this is gonna be omega of link I plus 1 is gonna be the omega of link I both of them expressed in the same frame pre-multiply both sides of the equation by the rotation matrix the whole idea here is to do a mapping in which now the angular velocity of link I plus 1 is expressed in frame I plus 1 and this is the formula for the angular velocity of link I plus 1 summary of the angular velocity for link I plus 1 again we have two cases one case is for uh, if joint I plus 1 was a revolute joint and the other case uh, for uh, the joint I plus 1 if it was a prismatic joint uh, you can see again the successive nature uh, of this uh, these two formulas where the angular velocity of the next link link I plus 1 depends on the angular velocity of the link before it link I and here we can see the joint rate uh, theta dot um, one thing maybe I would make need to make clear here is both theta dot and omega are angular velocity but why did we use different symbols for them we have omega here we have theta dot here the only reason is to distinguish between um, the angular velocity of a link this is for the link and this is the angular velocity of the joint that's it uh, I'm done for today and um, we'll continue next time with um, an example